event. Um, the topic of today will be uh, routing and specifically the challenges associated with routing and how the data intelligence can help us uh, solving them. Um, I'm here today with uh, Anders from Teletru and Ave from Mesente. So they will represent both operators and CPAS companies. And together we will go through some real life use cases of uh, how number intelligence can really help you solving your routing issues and uh, ultimately improve the delivery and the customer success. Um, as you all know, routing has become more and more complex in the recent uh, years. Well, before you could just route by country code. And nowadays with uh, new MVNO popping up as mushrooms, we have over 2,000 MVNOs and every day there is a new one with new associated code ranges, as well as uh, the increased rate of uh, number portability in the world. So in over 200 countries in the world, half of them, they already have number portability. And year after year, more and more countries are joining this trend. And more and more users are porting their number in existing countries. For example, in Italy, you already have more than 50% of number ported. And this creates complexity in uh, routing and knowing what is the exact MCC, MNC associated with the phone number. So in all this scenario, it's really important to have access to accurate and uh, real-time data so that you can take the right decision in, uh, in your routing. And that number core business is exactly this. We provide uh, number information to customers all across the, the um, telecom spectrum. And uh, I'm really pleased to be here with uh, two of uh, my favorite customers from the Nordics. Um, so I would like to start asking you guys maybe to introduce your organizations and um, also to tell us uh, how important it is for you to have an actual accurate routing. Do you want I to can, start? I can start then. Uh, yes, you know I work... Uh, can't hear me. It's on. No. Oh, it's off. Okay. Well, you can speak here. <laughs> <laughs> no? Yes. Yeah. Good. There we have it. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm Anders Karlsson. I'm from Tele2, and I work in the wholesale team here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we are a, a pretty small team. Try to, of course, uh, our main task is, is to... Uh, uh, protect our network and do as much on-net business as we can, but we also focus a lot on the off-net sales very actively since many years back. And uh, yeah, we are, are an operator, of course we can do uh, SRI lookups and things, but uh, as Roberto says, it's not good enough today. It will be too, too many errors, so we need something better. So, because we need to avoid uh, a lot of disputes, and a lot of support uh, tickets to us because uh, yeah we are not that many people and this really need to, to, to work for us so it's super important Ave. Uh, hi i'm Ave from mesente so mesente is a business messaging service provider and our focus is on business critical messages so our mission is very easy. It's to offer the customers a stress-free and easy go to the market. We help them solve all of the complex issues. And my responsibility in Mesenta is to manage our enterprise routing and to raise disputes to operators like that too. So. <laughs> so with the business critical approach, we have really seen that Everything with our routing side has to be on point because even 0.5% difference in deliverability really makes a difference for some customers. Let's say postal companies, we have seen them changing service providers just because of less than 1% um, delivery rate increase. At the same time, financial institutes, uh, what, what do they do if the 2FA code doesn't arrive to the customer? Some of them fall back to P2P messages, so the customer service person is actually sending out the one-time password in their phone, which is not sustainable or scalable 
for the customers. So this is why we are very critical with our routing and everything starts with the number information. Yeah, so as we hear, it's not really easy to know where to route the numbers anymore. And uh, uh, in this scenario where complexity is growing and growing, what are the challenges of it that you're seeing uh, uh, in your day-to-day -day activities? Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, new MVNOs are popping up every month now. You have to have that accurate real-time data on your hands to make those educated decisions in the routing. At the same time, you know, pricing uh, models have changed so much over the last years. We have some markets where the pricing difference between two operators are enormous, so you can't really make any mistakes in the routing. Let's take Serbia, for example. So the difference between operator international termination rates are 15 times even higher. And at the same time, we're seeing that um, there are many issues in the ecosystem. Let's say just in the beginning of this year, there was a problem for an uh, operator in Bermuda, where they, they are a very new operator, just launched uh, last year. And they had an issue where aggregators were not updating the number ranges. So their subscribers didn't receive the messages, which is awful user experience for the MNO subscribers. So in this case, we can't really rely on everyone updating their information in their systems. And that's where, you know, number intelligence service providers like NetNumber come in. But we're not stopping there. It's not only the aggregators or the platform providers. The, there is also sometimes issues happening on the MNO or regulatory side. Uh, for example, in Estonia, we have this very known MVNO who is a bit lazy with updating the information and, and providing updated information to the regulatory body. And it's maybe like two or three numbers that are allocated, but they are not updated as allocated numbers. But those two or three numbers make a difference for the customers, and these issues usually come to our attention pretty fast. And Anders, uh, do you also agree with Ave? Do you share the same challenges also on an operator level? And um, as you recently became a customer of NetNumber, how is the NetNumber solution really helping you on your day-to-day -day base to solve these kind of issues? Yeah, I think it does it work now. It, it, it helps us a lot uh, since uh, yeah the volumes are are big, big numbers, and uh, the margins are very low. So if you do a routing mistake, uh, it can cost you a lot. It's not uh, only for the messages, it costs you a lot of time for all em em employees as well mm -hmm. to handle this. So uh, it's super important. Yeah, so um, what are the main differences between using it and not using it? Because, uh, what, what were you doing before actually having access to this kind of, of data? Yeah, we use our own uh, lookup service, but uh, as I mentioned before, that was not good enough. So with this new uh, service, uh, the, the routing is more accurate mm -hmm. and, and precise, and we can avoid uh, routing the traffic wrong. Correct, because the information are out there, but it's not easy to collect them. So in, where you have your footprint, you have access to fresh uh, and accurate data, but maybe in other countries it will be more difficult for you to, to get access to those. Yeah. So that's why the importance uh, of having a, a player that is a third-party player that which core business is exactly collecting this data and then distributing to the industry, mm. it's key. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different sources um, depending on the countries mm -hmm. where to, to find the correct data. In some countries, the regulators are very active and, and, and some countries, as in Estonia, they're very lazy, so to oh, speak. Yeah. So, but, uh, so also in our footprint, it can be difficult to have accurate data. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. And do you have the same challenges, Abe? Have you tried to get access directly to some data, maybe through a regulator, and uh, you face some, some difficulties? Yeah, so we are not really going directly to the source. We tried this with one country. <laughs> and it's, you know, number intelligence is not our main core of the business. 
and we don't want to spend a month of development resources integrating this data source mm -hmm. and then replicating on, let's say, 100 markets. It's not what we do. Makes sense. Just work. Okay, so uh, maybe let's try to dive deep uh, down a concrete use case where uh, you've seen the real impact of a carrier ID solution from net number uh, in your routing. Do you have any uh, specific example you want to bring? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, for us, we were struggling a long time with inaccuracies between you know, same operators and our data being different, the partners who we use, their number of services giving different results. So we have been really critical on who we work with for number of intelligence as well. Um, so for us, there is no one provider if it's the whole globe solution. We want our data to be as accurate coming straight from the source with the shortest link. And uh, that's how NetNumber has helped us, basically. What about you, Anders? In your day-to-day -day operations, do you feel uh, the importance of the, of the solution? And how concretely, in a real-life example, I don't know, uh, an issue you had with an MCC that you couldn't recognize, mm. uh, NetNumber mm. enter and help you effectively? Yeah, we had a recent example uh, last week, I think. It was within our footprint, one of the Baltic countries, where our uh, lookup showed something different. Uh, but uh, then we switched to you, and uh, then we, the, the result solved the problem. So the routing became much better. So yeah, it, it helped us a lot. Yeah, the routing becomes better, but also under an uh, economical point of view, the revenue increases because you have the intelligence to choose the right route mm. that will permit you to save money. Yeah. Maybe invest them in champagne to celebrate. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah I think we did that. <laughs> oh. Okay, and um, yeah, so we heard that uh, both operators and C players, they are using this kind of services and for them it's important, but uh, um, all over the world, there are still large groups that are not getting access to this data, and they still route the, the old way. Um, what would you recommend this uh, company to, to do? Uh, get a better MMP solution, because I think, I think there's still a lot of off-net databases that uh, is in use for many com companies, mm -hmm. and that causes a lot of problems. And uh, yeah. I think uh, in, in the best or the best case would be, of course, if everyone used the same and the most accurate. Uh, because if we use an, uh, one uh, MMP solution and uh, the client use another, then the, there might be differences. But uh, I think that we will never solve. So. so I will leave you my business card after <laughs> the, the panel yeah. case. And uh, Abe, what about you? What would you recommend uh, uh, people to do? Use the same, so you will have no disputes. Uh, <laughs> I would recommend everybody looking at their business critically. We are still seeing companies who will put in their agreement, you know, only use number portability in your routing if we have agreed so. No, it should be the other way around. Number portability is the key to having your messages successfully delivered or the number portability data. So in Scandinavian markets, there's really nothing you can do with the global number range data anymore. And it's time for everybody to take that step and, and look critically what their business is using for the data. But I also think it's not only for routing this is important. You have uh, the scoring you are doing and the red flags for numbers and stuff it can be very useful for fraud prevention. I think that's the next step for us to implement in our fraud solutions. Correct. So all the data that we can collect uh, related to a phone number can really help us, not just in routing decision, but also yeah. in uh, preventing what is uh, the growing trend of fraud. Yeah, exactly. And uh, if we will all take the same direction, maybe we can uh, help our ecosystem to, to grow, to flourish. Mm and to survive also the new challenges that we are seeing from uh, the, the other channels, right? Exactly, and the mobile number is so 
important today in uh, not only in routing but this uh, unique ID that you use for for so many services out there on the uh, on the net. So I think uh, yeah, they need to be controlled, and uh, I th think that is uh, very very important. Yeah, correct. So well, thank you guys for. Uh for your present in the panel. It was Thank really you. nice to, was <laughs> to share uh, the stage with you. And um, do you have any question maybe from the audience? Don't be shy. Okay, Great. looks like no. Okay. So, Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? I'm looking at James here, surely. <laughs> <laughs> James <Okay>. is hiding. <laughs> I, I mean, from my perspective, again, from carriers and, and CPAS, it was just the cost of it, getting that right was, was important. I mean, that, is that still the case for carriers? Is it, is it the cost that's the main issue, or is, there, is it more on the customer, customer experience side, or both? Yeah, I think it's a combination, but... Uh Customer experience is very important, of course. But, yeah. Uh, but the wrong routing is uh, very bad for, for all, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, imperative we get that right. Yeah. I'm looking around now just if there's any hands. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Oh, we got one? I was going to say more of a comment rather than a question. <laughs> Hello everyone, James from uh, XConnect. It's pleased to see so many of you here in the room, all partners, including uh, NetNumber as well. Great to see you, Roberto. My comment, uh, Anders, you quite correctly said, obviously correct routing can save money, but the unfortunate situation is I have a first-hand experience, particularly in the past couple of months, of a good number of mobile operators who are monetizing their international ATP SMS very aggressively and they frankly have zero interest in the wider market, i.e. all of us having clarity on what numbers are theirs and what numbers aren't, because they are actually profiting from that. So it's a really, really tough situation at the moment in the market, and it used to be the case that all mobile operators wanted the likes of NetNumber, XConnect, and others to help them bring clarity but actually there are some out there and some decent ones at size who like the fact there isn't that clarity out there. So it's a very strange market dynamic at the moment. Many of us have been in the industry for decades and this is something new that I have never seen before. And it's uh, not nice. That's thank it. you. Thanks, James. Right, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.